Now, as a last resort, in a case, in case of a patient who is suffering from chronic renal failure, to save the life of the person, as a last resort, what is opted for is kidney transplantation. Now, you can see in this picture how a kidney transplant is carried out. The diseased kidneys are not removed from the system. The diseased kidneys are very much retained in the system. However, the transplanted kidney is grafted much below the level of the normal kidneys. Usually one kidney the person can make do with one kidney. Of course, it is going to involve a lot of restrictions in the routine life of the person. But one kidney is sufficient to filter the blood to maintain low levels of urea and other nitrogenous waste in the system below the toxic levels. And you can see how the ureter is also sutured up with the urinary bladder. So this technique, surgical technique, is referred to as kidney transplantation. But a lot goes into deciding how to go about with kidney transplantation because first of all, a recipient is receiving the kidney from a donor and obviously the recipient's immune system is going to recognize the kidney as a foreign organ. Therefore, the recipient must receive a dose of immune suppressant such as cyclosporin, an immune suppressant drug. This treatment has to go on for months so that you can suppress the immune system of the person, of the recipient, so that his immune system does not mount an immune response against the foreign organ, against the donor organ, which is received from the donor. And before conducting the tra transplantation surgery, something called tissue typing needs to be carried out to ensure that there is minimized risk of rejection. Now there are a lot of receptors on our body cells and those receptors which are need to be matched between the donor and the recipient. That's why it's ideal if the donor is a person who is a uh, who is probably uh, genetically related to the recipient, who is a family member of the re recipient. That way the chances of rejection would be nil. Of course blood testing has to go on and even tissue typing is very very important to match the tissue and in matching the tissue they are going to match the type of receptors that are present on each and every cell of our body in both the recipient and the donor. After removing the organ, it needs to be washed with an oxygenated fluid to avoid damage to the tissue because now once you've removed the organ from the body, there's no direct blood supply to the organ. So there may be deficiency of oxygen and the tissues might die. To prevent that, it must be washed with an oxygenated fluid and it must be cooled because cooling is always good in preserving the tissue so this is an attempt to reduce the risk of damage to the organ until it can be sutured into the recipient's body.